Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is <coughs> Dominic. I work at the Faculty of Civil Engineering in Zagreb, and I will present you a case study bridge, uh, which I developed along with my supervisor, Professor Mandic Ivankovic, and with Mr. Znidaric <coughs> from Slovenian National Building and Civil Engineering Institute. So, uh, main purpose of the presentation and the whole case study development is using the initial investment in SHM uh, that will result in extended bridge service life and overall more sustainable bridge management. Type of monitoring data, type of SHM data is bridge weight in motion measurements. <coughs> Here we can see the sensor for those of you who are not familiar with it. Those are sensors that use the bridge as a weighing scale and they weigh <coughs> the traffic on the bridge, but they also <coughs> give some structural data. So we can divide the data obtained in two categories. First one is traffic information, which gives volume, weight, speed, etc. of every vehicle passage. And other is structural data. We can obtain realistic influence lines, girder distribution factors and dynamic characteristics of the bridge. And <coughs> uh, those types of data depend on how long are we measuring, how many data do we have. Uh, Post-processing <coughs> of monitoring data can result in bridge structural data can be used to improve bridge numerical models and traffic information, if we have enough, we can <coughs> result in site-specific traffic load models. A reason why this bridge is chosen this is the cross-section of the bridge, so it's a it's small bridge, single span of almost 25 meters, simply supported, and its superstructure is consisted of five pre-stressed girders and a monolithic deck that connects them. A reason why it was chosen is because the whole assessment of this bridge was done during my STSM, uh, which I done in Ljubljana, and my host was Mr. Znidaric. Uh, we chose this bridge because we have original design plans, reinforcement drownings and everything else available from the archive. And also we done a visual inspection and uh, over two years of constant monitoring data is available for this bridge. Uh, <coughs> I will not go in detail about the assessment we done. Uh, all of this is available in STSM report. If you want to have a look into it, uh, it was presented in fifth workshop of this cost action in uh, DTU last year. And also uh, assessment procedure was presented in Zagreb in March of this year. Uh, more detailed assessment and outcomes <coughs> are available in a paper we published. It was, it's, it's accepted, it's not published yet, so <coughs> very detailed procedure can be found there. Uh, this is a numerical model of the bridge which we developed and then we used data from monitoring to calibrate the numerical model in order to obtain better results. Uh, what we did is that we put together a limit state function and we chose a critical failure mode as it's a simply supported bridge. Uh, we critical failure mode is bending in the middle of the span and we define the limit state function. So this is resistance to bending, and this is load effect as a bending moment. And we did it for each girder. So we uh, took this limit state function and we evaluated each girder separately. Uh, we did it deterministic and probabilistic. And for probabilistic assessment, every uh, variable in this equation was modeled as a stochastic variable. Here we can see for resistance side of the equation what we used, <coughs> all the <coughs> variables and distribution which was chosen. Um, the detailed parameters of standard deviation and uh, mean and characteristic values are, avail are available in a paper and information that we had and measure, we take them from uh, real life measurements Another we took from probabilistic model code <coughs> for <coughs> suggestion of distribution and uh, we had a mean values, so we took probabilistic model code suggestions how to 
evaluate standard deviation. So this is resistance side of the equation, this is loading, and we did a two different type of the assessment. First one, we took traffic load model from Eurocode for designing of new bridges, which we then took as our prior value, and we also did with traffic load model from obtained with bridge weight and motion measurements, and we also included, you will see later, structural data like influence line, then dynamic uh, characteristics of the bridge, etc. So the we did the whole assessment, and this is these are the results. Uh, here we have reliability index beta, which was calculated with first order reliability method analysis. For <coughs> each girder, these blue ones are our prior values, so they are calculated with traffic load from Eurocode, and the uh, green ones are uh, calculated with all the SHM data that we use. And just from this slide, you can see that quantification of SHM measurements is really obvious. Uh, as we can see, for example, girder 2, which was most critical because it had a priori value less than 3.8, which is uh, Eurocode suggestion for new bridges. And uh, with monitoring data, it went over 7. So this bridge maybe is not the best uh, example because uh, maybe it would be better to choose a bridge which has priori results below Europa thresholds but we chose it because we had all the data and <coughs> in then we wanted to do a complete assessment of it and define a procedure and then we could apply it on some other bridge which is in much much worse state so this is what I just said result analysis quantification and its foundation for further analysis of this case study bridge through value of information analysis. So implementation of value of information analysis, I have it in a couple of slides, but these slides are basically uh, data from this diagram. As um, it's pretty big, so you cannot read it, I will go step by step, just a quick overview. So the deci decision maker, bridge owner is national road directorate. There are no additional stakeholders. From their perspective, main objective is optimization of overall management system and a priority ranking for bridge maintenance, which can be pretty useful when you have limited funds over time periods. These objectives are achieved through normal and steady traffic flow on the bridge and extended bridge service life in general. So we can conclude that additional investments in SHM tools can be justified by fulfilling these objectives. <coughs> and we'll try to prove that through volume of information analysis. As for costs, if we invest in SHM, we have increased in initial investment, but we will try to prove that it would pay off through time. Um, because closing bridge for traffic, it's income and reputation loss for owner, of course, and it can also result in more catastrophic consequences like bridge collapse, etc. Uh, for boundaries of, for this SHM system, uh, there is no restrictions based on bridge type or bridge dimension, so it can be used on a variety of bridge bridges, but it requires qualified personnel of, and for installation and for data post-processing and additional knowledge for probabilistic or numerical calculation methods. Uh, these are events of inter inter interest. Sorry, uh, This is our prior value, assessment according to codes for new bridges. And then we had two uh, <coughs> different assessments with SHM. One is short-term, one is long-term measurements, because you cannot always have enough data for, for example, site specific traffic load model. Consequences can be bridge strengthening, which can be unnecessary or necessary, appropriate or unsuitable uh, traffic restrictions like weight restrictions on the bridge, or it can be bridge collapse, etc. But everything results in money loss and reputation loss. These are the main indicators that we observe from measurements, realistic influence line, greater distribution factors, and dynamic characteristics from structural response and also from traffic data that we can develop a traffic load model. 
resulting is reliability index. These are alternatives, uh, so we can decide based on visual inspection, uh, we can assume the state of the bridge and decide would, would we do assessment with SHM or we can do it without. Uh, other measures which can, which can this result is that we need to redefine the use of the bridge, impose a weight restriction, or demolition and total replacement of the bridge, or strengthening or repairing of the bridge. It depends on the assessment results. So this is the flow chart for proposed value of information analysis, and then based on training school knowledge and based on yesterday help from Sebastian uh, <coughs> and Daniel, we produce a decision tree. And this decision tree is uh, based on how it was proposed by Sebastian. So first we have strategies. We have three. So this could be our B0, assessment without <coughs> SHM, and it's our prior value. And then we have, for example, B1 and B2 strategies, assessment with SHM, uh, level one, which means short-term measurements, and assessment on level two, which means long-time measurements. But of course, you cannot always, if you need to assess bridge right now, you cannot expect to let measure for two years. That's why we have this intermediate step, because for this assessment, it's enough to have a couple of days of measurements. Now, <coughs> after that, we have SHM outcomes for these two branches, because this one is assessment without SHM. And uh, they can show us is there improvement or no improvement in bridge reliability. And what is important is to take into account uncertainties, costs, of course, SHM time uh, restrictions, because for this one it takes a long time. And after that we have actions. So regarding the actions, we have only two branches, but because of the simplification of the decision tree, we should have branches for no, for no repair, and then three, four possible repair types. So we can do bridge strengthening, weight restrictions, or total bridge replacement. <coughs> and we also have consequences of these actions, which are non-exclusive, and they are, uh, no matter which action we, we choose, we, could, we would have road closing, definitely, which would cause traffic jams on other roads, and loss of money, and loss of reputation in a perspective of the users. And finally, we have system states. We define just two, um, bridge safe or bridge not safe. And of course, if bridge is not safe, it has direct and un I indirect consequences. These are the ones we saw earlier, but we can also have, in worst case, human casualties and indirect consequences, some of them are that traffic jams on alternate uh, roads and loss of reputation. Uh, this is just a sketch, first draft of the decision tree, and I hope that we will develop it through STSM mission that we are planning. So critical appraisal <coughs> requirements is that we have complete assessment on each level. That's why we choose this bridge. Uh, what we need to do now is that we need to define all the costs and try to evaluate the bridge importance on the network level because that's imp that's important for indirect consequences <coughs> which is connected with consequences of bridge closing and possible simplifications we can do 3d bridge numerical model and maybe do a simple one with just 2d girder model and we can assume bridge importance <coughs> in network this one, we can do it based on similar bridges. That those are first two simplifications that came to mind. Of course, there, there can be a lot more of them. So general conclusion is that we have proven that with this, that bridge weight in motion uh, has a big contribution in increasing of bridge reliability. Now we have to prove that cost and benefit ratio is also good. Advantages of this is that we have everything because it was evaluated during the STSM in this cost section. Uh, we have complete multi-level assessment and we have detailed 3D numerical models. 
And further step, steps, of course, what I just said, we have to define cost and we have to set up whole value of information analysis. And that's it. Thank you.